Hey, my name is Makar, and as a child, I've always been fascinated by fire breathing. The very idea of spitting fire out of one's mouth seems a bit scary, mysterious, and yet truly captivating for me. By the age of 15, with the help of friends, I learned the technique, and it could have been the end of that chapter. But truly, that was just the beginning. You see, now I work in the Baltic's biggest science center, AHA, as a science educator and performer. We do lots of breathtaking experiments on different topics here, such as electricity, acoustics, human brain, math, chemical reactions, and well, fire. Yes, there are so many picturesque things you can do with fire. Change its color, shape, talk about the safety measurements, and show them all in practical ways. But also, take this thing that I've been so fascinated about as a child and blow it out of any imaginable proportions. Yes, you heard me right. The idea is to take fire breathing technique and expand on it enormously. But first, for that, we have to understand how the whole concept works and what we need for this chemical reaction to happen. And for that, I'm going to need the help of my colleagues. Oh, hello. My name is Daniel. Don't worry, I'm here to help you. Let's go. Okay. For burning or combustion to occur, we would need three things. Fuel, an oxidant and enough heat. For fire breathing, there are different types of fuel that can be used, but the fuel has to be chosen wisely, as the wrong type of one can lead to serious burns, intestinal toxicity, hair loss, bad taste in mouth, and so on. One of the most common types of fuel is purified unscented lamp oil due to its high flash point, which basically means that the temperature at which it evaporates and becomes ignitable is safe enough for the combustion not to happen prematurely. Are you done? Can we go to fireballs now, please? So with the fuel chosen properly, we can now focus on the next step, an oxidant. The most regular oxidant is atmospheric oxygen, which makes about 21% of the air. By spreading fuel in the air, we can get even more combustible mixture and thus increase the speed of reaction. Easiest and perhaps most common example of that in our center would be the burning of flour. While on the tray and packed tightly, it is really hard to ignite the flour, however, as soon as we spread it into the air, we can see a completely different result. So now, with the knowledge that we have, it is time to go bigger. For that, we need some sort of a container that could keep both the fuel and pressurized air and release it on our command as fast as possible. We've decided to take an old propane tank as they can withhold large pressure and are perfect for the task. After experimenting around with it a bit, our first cannon was made. And since it looked so cool and there was no doubt in it working well, we built a second one. Before we get to our fire show, we wanted to test our machine out. And uh, we didn't want to put all the dangerous fuels at the beginning, we wanted to do something safer, that's why we decided to go with water. Well, you might say that uh, water is kind of boring, why would you just spray water outside of the machine? Well, the thing is, it's currently winter in Estonia, uh, which means it's currently minus 17 degrees Celsius, so this regular water spraying might be a little bit more exciting than usual. We are heating up the cannon because hot water and cold air give us a visually better effect.
first experiments with water were successful, now we need to go and try those cannons out with fire. We just need to find a place where we won't hurt anyone, but luckily we know just the location. Wow, it, it's really cold here. It's, uh, I think it was minus 18 the last time I checked. I hope it's gonna get a little bit warmer as time goes on, but it's time to set up the cannons. Okay, now that the heavy work and heavy lifting has been done, we're ready for our first test. So, four liters of lamp oil are already inside. Now we're going to add some pressurized air and then fire our cannon. As long as we're not completely frozen, we have a little bit of time to do one more experiment. Let's do the same thing, but now let's put the cannon straight up. There are two ways how this can go, either really well or really badly. Well, that went really well. Now it's time to do the same thing, but with two cannons at the same time. Makar is very, very impatient. Before we try two cannons out, let's do a quick test with flour. Now that we've used up all the flour, let's get back to our first plan and use the two cannons at the same time. So cue the epic montage. And that is all the time that we have for today to spit some fire. I hope you learned something new and saw something exciting. We've been your private spicy food loving friends and we'll see you very, very soon to explore different topics.
If you have any questions that we could make a video about, then write them down in the comments below. And who knows, maybe your query is going to be the next one on our list. If you enjoyed this video, then you may want to like and subscribe, but most importantly, stay safe and till next time, my friends.